Okay. We're going to talk a little bit about the great diesis, which is the difference between, uh, in this key, in the key of G, we're going to start from here, the difference between D sharp and E flat. So, um, and you've probably seen guitars tuned in fifths by harmonics and things like that, but in this one, it's tuned in major thirds. So what I'm doing is actually, I'm tuning from one fifth of the G string to one quarter of the B string there. So just behind the fourth fret on the G string till right about at the fifth fret on the E on the B string. It's one one fifth of the string to one quarter of the string. There's about one fifth in there and then one 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 quarter right like that. So I've got that G string tuned pure to a uh, B string tuned pure to the G. Just like so. And you can hear there's no beating in there whatsoever. If it was equal tempered, if I played it at the fret here, you can hear some beating. Because the the B string is uh, a little bit flat of where it would be for equal temperament. If I just sharp the B string a little bit, tune it sharper. Now I've got it in tune with the fourth fret, and then you'll hear some beating on those harmonics. Okay, now I'm gonna bring it back. Pretty good. At least as good as I can hear over the fans of my computer. And now I'm going to tune the same interval here. So I tuned a pure major third from the G string to a B. So I've got a pure third there. And then I'm going to turn another pure major third above that. Oh, listen to that. That sounds pretty good, but this D, uh, it's going to be a D sharp above B. And one thing that I'll definitely recommend is um, that you want to do a lot of muting with the right hand. Um, so I'm, I'm using the side of my thumb and the palm to mute the bass strings so that I only hear the strings that I'm trying to tune. So you got that you only have the part of the instrument resonating that's that you want resonating when you're doing this because you're we're tuning something really complex here. That sounds pretty good to me too. So now I've got G, and then up a pure major third, B, and then up another pure major third, D sharp. Woo, spicy, as the kids like to say. And then I've got down a pure major third from G, to E flat. And let's just check that. It's it's the same method of tuning. Basically, whoops, that's not what you want to see. That's what you want to see. So same deal. One fifth of the string to one quarter of the string. I'll bring it a little flat and bring it up. Yep, and there you go. And I have my G string, or my fifth string, tuned to G as well. So I've got a little bit of a drone string in there. Okay. So, if I just play these three strings, if I play the fifth string, the third string, and the second string, I just have a nice pure G major chord. It's just root, root, third, and there's a little bit of fifth overtone in that, so you can hear, of the perfect fifth overtone that is. So we can hear that as a G major chord. And if I just then, if I just put a little, if I just put a finger on the um, fifth fret of the fifth string, now I can have a pure C minor, and then I'm gonna go back. G major, because I've got the minor third of the four chord, that E flat right there, which is a major third down from your from your tonic G there is what this E flat is, right? Mm, 
like ding dong. And if I just put the C underneath it there, right? And I could even add a little bit of a of an octave on there if you want. So mm, let's just go a little bit like that and go like. Cut cuts out the bass if I put the harmonic on there, but. And you can hear pure major, four minor, you might start hearing this like you're in C minor, your, your ear may have modulated so you're hearing this as like five, one, especially because I kept hitting that. But there you have that E flat sound, and then if instead we want to get this B major sound that we're gonna get with the D sharp up here. Ooh, doesn't that sound weird now after we heard all that C minor? I was like, what is that? It certainly does. Oh, you don't wanna see that. Okay, so, <laughs> sorry, okay. So, right there, and let's see. I'm gonna tune this string right here. One, one third of the low E string. To the open B right there so that I've got this B tuned to this B a third higher because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for my G chord okay so I'm playing the G G and B made and then B to get a less nice G major tonality and now I'm going to just put this B in the bass and now I've got almost pure just a couple of cents off here for the tempered fret but actually I've got it fairly well tuned and now to E minor so here's B, so here's G and then and then going to E minor So one of these notes, the E flat, is going to the parallel minor. Sorry about that. And the other one is going to the relative minor. One's going to G minor, and the other one's going to the, the parallel or the relative minor, E minor. And you can hear, let's see, I'll go back to this thing. So it's G major, B major, E minor. And then G major, C minor, G major. And they're in two different places. And one of the reasons that I did this is just so that you could hear the actual pitch difference between those two places. Because if I now I have this is G, third string, B, second string, D sharp on the first string, and uh, E flat on the fourth string. Now if I play this harmonic here, it's going to bring it an octave up, so it'll bring the fourth string and the first string into the same octave, and you can hear the pitch difference, the comma. You can hear how, how out of tune, how far apart those two places are. Sounds really brutally ugly together. And the reason that I would use this tuning or that I would even mess around with this tuning is not at all so that you can um, play through those chords the way that I was and tune the extra strings, but so that you could practice singing two major thirds up and just get that sound in your ear. It feels very, very strange um, at first. It's very, very foreign. But what you'll hear it as is, and the way that you practice that is just simply to, you know, you play the B string, 
and then sing the major third above it. There you hear it. It's very clearly. I'm going to the, you know, if you sing that, you'll hear that. It's very much going to the relative minor. As opposed to this one, you're going to have. That's that uh, borrowing from minor chord that Brian used on his song that it was showing you. It's basically going to the four minor. I pulled out this party trick with the tuned guitar to both of these pitches is so that you could actually see this thing that we've been talking about is, oh, look at that, E flat and D sharp are two different pitches. They're two different places. There you go. So here is this G on the lattice, and then here is a major third down. E flat, and then up a major third to B, and then up another major third to D sharp. That's what I tuned on the guitar. And that's the range. You actually, you hear this range of the diesis. We were talking about Radiohead earlier. You hear it in um, Creep because it goes G major, and then it goes B major, right? And so you have that D sharp, and then it goes to the C chord, and then it goes to C minor where you have the E flat. That's the most, like famous use of the diesis in contemporary pop music, contemporary of the last 30 years, I guess, um, that I can think of, is that, oh, hey, we go G, and then we go up a major third to B, and it's a major chord. And you think, like, the, the, the most basic use of that B chord in the key of G would be to go to E minor like I was doing. But instead... What it does is it just hops up to the C chord and then they go to the parallel minor of that C chord for the C minor and then comes back to G. And it has a very beautiful affect. It's not subtle. The diesis isn't as subtle as the, di the dimmit comma, but um, it's wonderful. And um, there you go. There it is on the lattice. So. Nope. So. Going down from, you know, usually you hear that as a B7 chord, you know, you'll hear a G major. And that's, you know, the expected cadence. You're going down a fifth from that B7. But sometime in the late, like, 1900s, late, late, you know, oh, sorry, late 1800s, as the late 19th century, you started hearing, you know, instead of, you know, up to the C chord, and that became more commonplace. And that's what happens in the Radiohead song. You have G, B7, C, C minor, G. And um, if I show you that on the fretboard, like, um, yeah. Um, maybe play G like so. Or actually, I'm even going to put the third in the base of that G chord. Right? So, like, um. B7, right? C. C minor. I kind of like that the best. That's a good way to do that. G. B7. Oh, I went to the E minor. G, B7, C major, C minor, G. 
here getting to both sides of the diesis, mm -hmm. but you notice that there's a chord in between because kind of going from this is very confusing and disorienting. Mm -hmm. If I just tried to go G, B7. I did a little C minor seventh there, but if I did G, B, that sounds really weird. Weird. Because you don't have that step in between. And actually, Joe's been working on this song, uh, The Warmth of the Sun by the uh, Beach Boys. And there's a thing that Brian Wilson does in the voice leading of that to avoid that same kind of clash where you're going between a comma between notes and he puts a little intermediary note so you don't go directly through the comma. And he, he just did it by ear. You know, he just said, you know, that, that doesn't sound good, so we're going to do 